Hi, Doug here. So here is the fire hydrant that I recently restored. This is a Mueller Centurion model. This is from 1982. This particular model was only made for three years because it had a, what they called a weather cap that went over this nut on top. They realized over the years that was no longer needed and they got rid of it. So that piece on top is actually pretty rare, but I didn't put it back on because again, I love the look of all the bronze on top. So the reason you guys are probably watching this video is the title of it is how does a fire hydrant work? So I'm not a fireman. Um, this is the best information I was able to deduce and learn as I went along on how they work. And I figured you guys get a kick out of it because not every day do you get to take apart a fire hydrant and look inside. So the first thing that's obvious about a fire hydrant usually is the giant nut on top. And this is your operating valve, your operating nut. This particular nut, which I'll pull out here, is shaped like a pentagon. So a lot of times the wrench you'll use is called a penta wrench. And the reason it's shaped with five sides instead of six, a standard socket won't work, a standard crescent wrench won't work because it comes in parallel and it's going to be always be on a pointed side so it won't work good. You can put a pipe wrench on there but it's not ideal and basically they do this because they only want the fire department to open these because there is a lot of pressure sometimes 250 psi with what 1500 gallons per minute of water flow. It actually could be dangerous so that's why they use these special nuts on top. This is here is called the control nut inside, and this particular piece is all bronze. This part comes off here. There's an O-ring seal on the inside, and then there is this passageway inside here, which we're going to get into in a moment. So I'm just going to kind of screw that down. And then these threads here go to your control rod that runs down the center of the fire hydrant. So what I mentioned about the center is these things are actually hollow. So let me set this aside for a moment. And we're going to lift out these bolts, which these are stainless hardware, and these are all original to it. I was able to clean them up and reuse them. So we're gonna lift this chunk off here, which is about 60 pounds of cast iron. And there, oh, I forgot one. There is the inside. Not much to it. Like you see it, that's just, there's a copper sleeve in here that has O-rings in the end of it that seals that rod that runs through. As you can see there, right down through it. There's a cavity down inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this here gently. So this cavity inside here is normally filled with oil. This little plug here that unthreads, little brass quarter inch NPT plug, that is where you put your oil in. So the way this works is once you install your fire hydrant, you have your control rod coming up from the valve, which I'll talk about in a moment. That control rod comes up through that copper sleeve and it's sealed in there and goes up to the control nut and threads into this. And again, this is threaded in the top. When you start spinning this control nut here like so, this, if I pull this off, just kind of floats in there. This nut here is what keeps it from pushing up or coming out of the top on here. And there is a little compression washer here that is your bearing surface. That's probably like a PTFE or ultra high molecular weight plastic. And that's your bearing surface. So as you are opening the fire hydrant, turning it counterclockwise, it is taking this metal shaft here and pushing it down inside. While doing so, it's pushing up on this bore which is against this washer here, which pushes up against these threads into the head here. So whenever you're opening up the fire hydrant, that thread is getting pushed down. As it's going down, it's creating a vacuum in the head here. Once it goes down past the point this opens up, it sucks the oil in that's inside this reservoir and fills up this upper housing of the nut. And then once you go to close the fire hydrant and you thread this down, as the thread comes back up, because this sits in a bath of oil, that's what oil gets sucked in, it then forces the oil down with hydraulic pressure from the screw coming up past the threads and down the rod and back into the cavity through this hole. So basically, every time you cycle the fire hydrant, it self-oils the threads. It's a really genius system. And if you ever take one of these apart, be careful turning the head upside down because you will get covered in 40-year-old oil like I did. And you'll smell like Kenny with the rest of the day, which is lots of fun. So that is the, the head of the valve. You see this one here says Mueller on it, ASR. This is a particular model that this one is, the five and quarter inch main valve. And it's made in Albertville, Alabama. And this one is marked with 264 as a serial number on the head. So we'll set that aside. Fire hydrant itself, completely empty. And if you don't believe me, I'm gonna pull off the main cap here. I can reach right through. So the, the rest of this body is completely hollow the whole way down through. The end caps come off like so and they have a rubber washer on the inside that seals them up. So it is a straight thread. Uh, these particular ones are not tapered, and it seems to do a face seal with a rubber O-ring on it. Same for this one here. Although this one looks different than most fire hydrants I've seen. If you know what this particular fitting is, feel free to comment down below. It's longer than most, which is very interesting. But all cleaned out inside and out. Bronze, these are removable. You have to get a special wrench to pull them out, and they're reverse threaded on, so that way when you try to take a stuck cap off, you don't unthread the threading section out of the cast iron. And again, they make these out of bronze instead of cast iron just for the fact that they won't corrode and the threads will stay good when you gotta attach it out in the field. 
Uh, this is your main seal flange on top. This will normally have a rubber gasket in it that uh, deteriorated over time, so I removed it. And that's what seals in all the pressure. Now, how do they actually operate it? This is hollow inside. Well, that shaft I mentioned, it goes all the way down inside. That goes down about six feet. Depending on what part of the country you are in, it will go below the frost line. So at least three feet down into the ground. Down underneath there is a big valve. Um, not dissimilar to this giant valve here. But what it is, it's a seat valve. So there is a giant diaphragm down inside. And the best way I can describe that is the bottom water line kind of sits like this and the valve sits pushed up inside there. So the water pressure holds that plug in place. It can't go anywhere. When you unthread that fire hydrant top, you're pushing the rod down, which forces that valve seat below the seat, which allows the water around and up through. So I'll put a diagram on the screen here. And when that rod gets pushed down, that allows the water to come up into the fire hydrants. So these are called dry head or dry sump, or actually dry cap fire hydrants because the top cap part is dry during normal operation so it doesn't freeze. Well, now your next question is, if it's full of water and you shut it off, how does that not freeze? Well, it's a genius design. There's a traveling slug inside the shaft and it seals up holes inside when it's pushed down and that allows the water to go around and go through. But whenever you pull that back up, it exposes hole at the base to allow all the water that's in the top to drain out into the soil around the pipe. Genius system, that way if the head drains down, there's nothing in here to freeze and it's basically a self-draining system. Now, the fittings that are on these, um, this is your pumper connection. Again, I don't know the names for these. They're standardized at some point. But this is where you'd hook up your large pumper for your fire hydrant or for your fire truck. And then these are your hose connections. So if you happen to have a fire hose, this is, um, here this one is off the top of my head. Um, either way, this fire hose fits onto a standard connection and you can actually thread it right onto the fire hydrant here. Um, so this is your standard hose. If you're putting out a fire, it doesn't require a fire truck. You just need a hose to hook up. You hook up to these side ones. If you need to hook up to a fire truck to get more volume, you connect to this larger port in the center here. This particular one was rated to between 1,000 and 1,500 gallons per minute of water at 200 PSI. So this was a lot of flow that can come through this guy. Now, the next question you may have is in a movie, you always see these get hit and the water goes flying out. Well, a lot of that's kind of a lie. I mean, that's movie magic in a way. Sometimes it's rare, but that can't happen. That shaft that goes down right at the base has a breakaway coupling. It's like a zinc coupling. And then these bolts bolt into something called a breakaway flange, which are like two C pieces of cast iron. They're somewhat brittle. It, like this particular one was installed in 1982, was hit in 1984 and sheared off. When that happened, it separated, broke that flange and it's supposed to have separated that coupler on the shaft. This one didn't, that coupler stayed attached and actually bent the center control rod inside here. So they had to scrap this entire unit, which is why I ended up with it 40 years later. Now, when it breaks away, because it's separating off, there's no force pushing down on that valve. That valve stays seated, no water comes out. So the only way you can get water to come out from a fire hydrant breaking is if somehow that valve seat gets pushed down during the accident and cocked over to one side. It's the only way I can see, otherwise it would reseal right back up. Uh, there are problems I've learned from uh, firefighters that apparently kids like to open these up and throw rocks inside and other debris. So when this hydrant cycle, rocks get stuck down in that valve. And to replace that valve, they have to shut the main off to the the water line for the city there and there's this giant valve tool you stick down the big t-handle and you can actually unthread it and replace the valve from the top really cool system again we've learned this particular fire hydrant weighs about 200 pounds the whole assembly weighs close to 600 pounds of cast iron and valving and brass um, they're very heavy units and very awesome but hopefully this video helps give you a quote-unquote inside view of what a standard fire hydrant is thanks for watching